So out of all the potential DNC chair candidates, I think that the worst one by far is former Labor Secretary Tom Perez because he's demonstrated time and again that he's not a leader and he certainly doesn't want to address the problems that the Democratic Party has. And if you don't think that the Democratic Party has any problems, then you will not be an effective chair. You're not going to be an effective leader of the party. Now, there's several reasons as to why Tom Perez should not be the DNC chair. I'm going to focus on the most important ones. So first of all, he's wishy-washy. Just last week, he admitted that he was listening to the criticism of Bernie Sanders supporters, and he said, look, they've told us loud and clear that the primary was rigged, and they're right, it was rigged. And then just hours later, he backpedaled. He said, you know, actually, the primary wasn't rigged. Everything I said, you know, scrap it. Hillary Clinton won fair and square. So that's the type of leadership you're going to get. He caters to a certain portion of the party, and he falls over himself to make sure that the establishment is happy and that's really frustrating and if he does become the dnc chair then he's demonstrated time and again that his only job will be to make sure that the establishment is in fact satisfied with him and to make sure that the status quo is maintained now the fact that his only job will be to protect the democratic party establishment became really evident when he was met with resist trump protesters who asked him loud and clear they heckled him but it was necessary and they asked him three times would you support the primary challengers of corporatist Democrats and centrist Democrats who are willing to cave to Donald Trump at every turn. Uh, people like Joe Manchin, for example, and I'm summarizing as to what they said, uh, but here's a video of that. Can you commit to supporting those primary challengers who run against incumbent Democrats? Oh, no. Just answer. No. No. Just answer. We'll take that as a no. We're very lucky that Tom Perez gave us his time tonight, so let's not put him in a difficult Now, that protester never got an answer, even though she asked him the question three times, and it was a pretty simple uh, yes or no question. Do you support primarying the Democrats who are Democrats in name only? He wouldn't answer, and it's because we know his answer. Tom Perez would not. And I like how at the end there, um, it got cut off, but the host said, you know, I don't want to put Tom Perez in a difficult position. <laughs> and, you know, it, this is just ridiculous. He wants to be the leader of the Democratic Party. I think we have to put him in difficult positions. We need to ask him the hard questions, because if we don't, then how are we going to know if he is going to be capable of leading the Democratic Party? And look, Tom Perez is someone who gets startled pretty easily. He's literally run away from journalists who have asked him if he would condemn the illegal Israeli settlements. He refuses to answer such simple questions like that. It's absolutely just amazing to me. Now, additionally, another problem with Tom Perez is that he absolutely refuses to address the fact that the Democratic Party is divided. He wants to bury his head in the sand and pretend that we're all unified. How concerned are you that this campaign is turning into a proxy fight between sort of the Obama-Clinton wing, which people say you represent, and the Sanders wing that many people believe Keith Ellison represents, and that this is, this is going to hurt both of you uh, if this is how this breaks down. Listen, we're, we're, every candidate, uh, we, we have a great relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, Congressman Ellison is uh, a, a fantastic member of Congress, and we've worked together. And when I talk to voting members and when I talk to uh, you know, folks out there, rank-and-file Democrats, what they tell me is we need to focus on the future. We have the existential threats of, of Donald Trump. Now, he also refuses to say whether or not he would ban lobbyist contributions to the DNC. And when confronted with a question about how the Democratic Party has abandoned the working class and only caters to elites, well, he just simply didn't have an answer. And you saw in this election what happens when people get frustrated enough that they say, I'm not going to take this aristocracy, it's got to be broken somehow in both parties. And I think that's what the Trump message was that, that uh, echoed so strongly in these flyover communities. What do you say to that? Well, you know, I think the Democratic Party does need to make house calls. Uh, we have to be the party in all 50 states and the, and the territories and for Democrats abroad. And I think we need to communicate that message of, of uh, economic security. I worked for Ted Kennedy. Uh, his message was twofold. The Democratic Party has always been about pathways to the middle class. It's always been about good jobs. It's always been about Social Security, Medicare. And the Republicans have been about privatizing uh, Social Security and voucherizing Medicare. We've been about lifting wages. And we've also been that party of inclusion and opportunity. I believe our diversity is our greatest strength. And I believe that when we uh, put hope on the ballot, we win. And when we allow others to put fear on the ballot, we don't do so hot. Okay. That sounded like a lot of great slogans. But that still doesn't get at the problem 
that the Democratic Party has branding-wise in Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa, Ohio. Well, part of that problem, Chuck, is that we, we um, haven't made house calls there. Look, Tom, if Chuck Todd is calling you out because you're using too many platitudes, then I think you're using too many fucking platitudes, dude. Now, his response to uh, the party abandoning the working class was, well, we need to make more house calls. And he said it twice. And I mean, sure, that's part of it. But I mean, you have to cleanse the party of the virus that is corporate money. And you don't want to do that, Tom. Now, most importantly, we all talk about how the Democratic Party establishment, they put their finger on the scale for Hillary Clinton. Now, it's important that we're all reminded of the fact that Tom Perez is part of that. He will was implicated in the DNC emails uh, when WikiLeaks revealed that the DNC colluded with Hillary Clinton's campaign to destroy and sabotage Bernie Sanders' campaign. Tom Perez was part of that. So after the Iowa caucus, Tom Perez literally emailed John Podesta and congratulated him and said, they said high turnout would hurt us and we won nonetheless. So, I mean, by using words like we and us, he's unequivocally backing Hillary Clinton and thinks that he's part of Hillary Clinton's team. Now, this was during the time when Obama's administration purported to be neutral. But I mean, here you have Tom Perez from Obama's administration in cahoots with Clinton's campaign. And that's not even the worst part, though. So since Bernie Bernie Sanders was doing well among young voters, Tom Perez advised John Podesta to create the narrative that Bernie Sanders only does well among young white voters. And this was one of the many ways that the establishment tried to subtly suggest that Bernie Sanders was racially insensitive. I mean, you saw David Brock later state that Bernie Sanders didn't care about African American voters because one of his ads wasn't diverse enough. So I mean, Tom Perez... He's everything that's wrong with the Democratic Party. And if he's the new leader of the Democratic Party, they're going to be in for a really rude awakening. They're going to lose a lot of voters. And the scary part is that Tom Perez is claiming that he secured 180 of the 224 needed votes to become the DNC chair. Now, I don't know how, th how true this is. I think it's probably overstated, but I mean, I think that the chances of him becoming the DNC chair, they're certainly high. So let me tell everyone in the DNC this. If you make Tom Perez the DNC chair, you're going to lose out on a generation of voters. Progressives will not come back to the party. Dem exiters will not come back to the party. So when you make that vote, choose wisely because this vote isn't just going to determine the future of the Democratic Party. This vote will determine whether or not the Democratic Party will have a future at all. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.